Michael, stand up. The great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, speaking of Jacob's trouble, speaking of Israel, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered every one that be, shall be found written in the book. Written in the book. First of all, what you see there in that verse is you see Michael, the great prince, and he stands up. Did you notice that the, that the devil stood up? And when the devil stood up, so did Michael. Huh? When the devil stood up, so did Michael. He stood up for the children of, of Israel and during the time of Jacob's trouble, or in other words, during the, the, uh, the uh, tribulation time. But if you notice there in the last sentence it says, uh, Thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. So that word, that scripture there is speaking of Messianic Jews. To be written in the book, you've got to be saved by the Lord Jesus Christ. So it's speaking of Messianic Jews, and, it's, and the Word of God here in the book of Revelation confirms that here in the next few verses. Hallelujah. We also find Michael in the book of Daniel chapter 10, since we're here in the book of Daniel. You know, Daniel chapter 10 is, is, is about the, the, uh, the prophet Daniel when he goes to prayer and he is praying, uh, praying and fasting for 21 days. And he said, uh, I'll start here with uh, verse 12. Then he said unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia, in other words, the enemy, withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. And I remained there with the kings of Persia. So what you see there is you have a picture of the prince, this mighty prince of Israel, coming to the prophet Daniel's aid. Did you notice what they were fighting over in that text? Words. Isn't that interesting? That's what that whole war was about in the heavenlies, was the words of Daniel. You think there's not powerful things in our words? Ah, the enemy comes to stop those words. Well, anyhow, we're talking about Michael, aren't we? Let's keep going. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Now, let's go back to the book of Revelation, chapter 12, and verse 8. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to verse 7 so we catch up. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. Verse 8. And prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. So in other words, the devil lost. Praise God for that. The devil lost. Michael won and his angels. The devil lost. In other words, he prevailed not. And their place was found, uh, not found any more in heaven. Now, you see, Satan prevailed not. In other words, Satan and his host, or his, his angels, lost the battle in the heavenlies. Satan was cast out of the third heaven with one-third of the angels, in other words, those that had rebelled against God. Do you remember that? When he was cast out of heaven. You see, that video helped us the other night, didn't it, about heaven? Because you see, in the beginning, back in Ezekiel chapter 28... That's right, Ezekiel 28, when it talks about Satan, I saw a star fall from heaven. He was cast out of the third heaven. You still with me? He was cast out of the third heaven. Do you remember that? The heaven that was in the north. The third heaven. Where was he cast to? He was cast into the second and third heavens. What is the second and third heavens? It is the atmosphere and the stratosphere, and that's where he's been since his fall. That's where he's been since his fall, and that's where he's at right now. You see? And this war, if you notice here, as we keep going here, uh, 
in verse 9, You notice there it says, And the great dragon was cast out, and that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth. And his angels were cast out with him. You see? He's cast out in, uh, to the earth. He's not cast to the earth until the last three and one half years of the tribulation hour. You see, when he, because he is in the atmosphere and the stratosphere in the first and second hev heavens, that's the reason he's called the prince and the power of the air. Satan will remain there and he is, until he is cast to the earth in verse 9 that we just read. It is also important to note that he is not cast into the eternal hell, in other words, the, uh, the lake of fire, until after the millennium in Revelation 20, verse 10. Revelation 20, verse 10. Now, let me back that up for you just a little bit. Satan was cast out of the third heaven in Isaiah 14, verses 12 through 14. Satan was cast out of the first and second heavens in Revelation 12, chapter 9. We just read it. And then he is cast into the lake of fire in Revelation 20, verse 10. You still with me? Okay. So you see, verse 9 signals the end of Satan's rule in the heavenlies. That's the war in the heavenlies. In other words, in the atmosphere and in the stratosphere. That's the reason why, you'll notice here in verse 10, that all of heaven rejoices over Michael defeating Satan. If you look at verse 10, and I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God night and day. Well, you see, a big praise session begins with verse 10. Why? Well, first of all, if you notice there, and firstly, because salvation from Satan's atmospheric control has taken place. Because that's where he's at right now. Secondly, God's strength has crushed Satan's might. Thirdly, the kingdom of God, or the kingdom, is about to arrive. Fourthly, the power of Christ will be seen as he comes to set up his kingdom. Also in verse 10, if you notice there, For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. How many of you know that accusing the brethren is Satan's present ministry? That is his present ministry. And I was meditating on this, and I was actually shocked what the Holy Spirit showed me, because you realize that he uses many ministers and religious people to accomplish his goal? Did you know that? You better believe it. He uses the ministers and the religious people of the day to accomplish this goal. Every bit of slander against another brother or sister in Christ is simply Satan using an individual. Did you know that? You better believe it. Do you ever know the criticism never comes from the world? It comes from your brother or your sister. That's the reason why Jesus Christ said to Peter, the apostle, he says, get thee behind me, Satan. Because he was trying to stop the will of God. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Always remember, who slandered Jesus? Do you realize that the word devil, the very word devil means slanderer? That's right. We have to be very careful and not let the enemy use us. Hallelujah. Verse 11. Thank you, Father. Oh, I love this verse. And they overcome him by the blood of the Lamb. Woohoo! Huh? And the word of their testimony. Hallelujah. Amen. And they love not their lives unto death. They overcome him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. In other words, these wise saints resisted Satan by the blood of Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb. Hallelujah. I don't even know who the Lamb is. 
Hallelujah. And by the what? The Word of God. By the Word of God. You know, my dear people, there is no other way to win a spiritual battle than that verse right there. Hallelujah. Verse 12. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Hallelujah. Because then, my dear people, that's where we're at. Because we've already been raptured. You still with me? We are already up there. We were raptured in chapter 4, verse 1. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, that ye dwell in them. But says, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. You better believe it. He's got 42 months left. And he knows it. You must remember, my dear people, that the old devil knows the Word of God too. You better believe he knows it. <clears throat> you ought to read him the last page tonight, you reckon? Woo-hoo, glory be to God, huh? You better believe it. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you tonight, the devil comes at you and if he tries to remind, tries to remind you of your past, <clears throat> you remind him of his future. Remind him of his future. Read the last page in the book. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Well, here with what we see here in verse 12, it says, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. In other words, at this point, uh, Satan unleashes all his fury. He unleashes, unleashes everything he's got. I mean, he is mad. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. I thank God I'm saved tonight. Don't you thank God you're saved tonight? Huh? Oh, glory be to God. Whew. Glory be to God. I would walk out that door and not be saved. Would you? No way. Well, let's go on here to uh, see Revelation 12, verse 12. Is that right? Verse 12. Oh, 13? Hallelujah. That's right. Okay. We see, my dear people, Satan knows he's only got 42 months, so he, like I said, he's mad. He's going to make hay while the sun shines. You ever hear that term? Make hay with the sun shines. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 13. And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman, meaning Israel, which brought forth the man-child, meaning our Lord Jesus Christ. You see? And what you've got there is Satan begins to persecute Israel with all his fury. And it comes under persecution for these 42 months or these three and one half years. <clears throat> Israel thought they had problems when Hitler was walking the earth. They've really got some big problems now. Of course, Hitler was the spirit of the Antichrist there. <clears throat> Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Verse 14. And to the woman, or in other words, Israel, were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time and times and a half time from the face of the serpent. Hallelujah. Now that one reads like the six o'clock news. You know why it reads like the six o'clock news? How many of you know who the eagle is? It's America. You see, the eagle is identified right there as America. Just like the United Kingdom is identified as the lion. Okay, so what's happened there is what we're seeing here is there is an American airlift to safety for the Israelis or the Israelites. As, as we all know that America today is Israel's present sponsor. They're their present sponsor. Hallelujah. So what we see there is we're seeing an airlift uh, given two wings of a great eagle from America that she might fly into the wilderness and enter a place uh, where she is nourished for a time and times and a half time from the face of the serpent. So she is flown to safety. Verse 15. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away with the flood. 
Well, the flood of his mouth, what does that portray? Propaganda. Propaganda. <clears throat> the flood out of his mouth portrays a large volume of, of propaganda. Isn't that how they operate? Isn't that how the devil operates today? Propaganda. Okay. So the flood out of the mouth portrays this large volume of, of propaganda. In other words, anti-Semitic in, in, uh, insinuations. I can't say that word. Insinuations. Hallelujah. God's got his way to keep you humble, I'll tell you that. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Is that right? He's got his way to keep you humble. I got a good friend of mine, every time she gets up in ministry, her slip falls. It's true. Her slip falls to the floor. <laughs> God's got his way to keep you humble. Amen? <laughs> well, in other words, out of the flood of his mouth portrays this large volume of propaganda. In other words, uh, slanderers and, and, uh, and in, intuitions and, and insinuations. <laughs> insinuations. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, of course, they're released internationally through the airwaves and through the TV and through the media, you see. And the earth helped the woman. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood. And the dragon, the, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know what that's saying? The earth swallowing up the flood means that the words of the Antichrist were rejected by the people of whom the remnant of Israel was hidden. That's what it's saying. Hallelujah. My dear people, time's getting short indeed. Short, 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 short. Hallelujah. And then we read in verse 17, it's where I'm going to stop this evening. And the dragon was wroth with the woman. I mean, the dragon is hopping mad. <laughs> he is hopping mad with Israel. And went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know what that's saying there in verse 17? Which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. My dear people, these people are Messianic Jews. Do you remember that other scripture I gave you? In Daniel 12, 1? Messianic Jews. My dear people, the Jews had accepted the Lord Jesus Christ once and for all as their Savior. Amen? Hallelujah. Well, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Next, uh, next, uh, next Sunday night we'll be ministering about chapter... Beginning with chapter 13, which is interesting. Beginning in verse 1. Hallelujah. Well, my dear people, <clears throat> hallelujah. Of course, I know most of you are here this evening, but I want to know.